What's up, Buck Douglas Dean in the garage. I had a puzzling experience this weekend in this WJ that I thought I'd share with you guys, uh, find out your opinions on my little question mark uh, on my day. Here's what happened, right? Uh, so if you don't know, this is a 2001 uh, WJ with the 4.7 and the 5.45 RFE transmission behind it. It's got now 117,000 miles on it. It's uh, not new, but new to me. Uh, bone, bone, bone stock, right? So this weekend we had to make a little road trip. We have family in upstate New York. Uh, so Friday, uh, the wife and the kid were already up there. Friday I got out of work. I filled this thing up and I started heading up north. Now, I'm not someone who really cares about miles per gallon all that much. I don't want to drive something that gets 10 miles per gallon, but I'd rather drive something fun than sacrifice driving an interesting vehicle uh, just to get 30 whatever miles per gallon. I just don't care. Life's too short to drive a boring vehicle. But that said, it does interest me because a lot of times uh, what miles per gallon you're getting in a vehicle will uh, you know, can, can be indicative of the health perhaps of that engine. And since this thing's only been in the family for a month and a half, I'm still trying to gather information on exactly how healthy this motor is. So I filled up, uh, I zeroed out my uh, odometer, I zeroed out my EVIC miles per gallon, uh, because you can't really trust the EVIC in these things. Sometimes they're close, but sometimes I've seen them literally five whole miles per gallon off of what the reality is. Um, I'm gonna do a video on why those things are so unreliable sometimes. So I zeroed out it anyway, just to find out. I zeroed out my odometer. My tank is absolutely full. Um, we take the throughway all, up, all the way up to uh, New York, but um, to get to the throughway, I have to go about 30 something miles through backwoods, hills and all that. We live in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains here. Uh, in where we are in northwest New Jersey. So everything's hilly, everything's twisty or turny. Backcountry roads, 35, 55 miles an hour. I'm driving out there, I finally get on the thruway. I'm driving up, <clears throat> my odometer is going up, my EVIC is showing some crazy numbers, uh, and my gas gauge is not really moving at all. all right now, I've just driven 30 miles at 50 miles an hour through hills. Now I've been on the thruway for another 20 miles, and I'm thinking my gas gauge should start to be going down. Uh, moreover, my EVIC is showing that I'm getting like 20 miles per gallon. So now I'm interested, I'm paying attention to what's going on, um, and I'm driving some more, I get up to about 100 miles. My gas gauge has not moved that I can see. So now I'm thinking, great, my gas gauge is broken. I've had that problem before where it shows full all the time. I've had the problem where it shows empty all the time. Uh, usually in these things, the problem is in the gas tank. So now I'm thinking, great, I have to drive all the way up to uh, upstate New York. It's from when I, when I leave from work, it's 226 miles. And when I come home from there to my house, it's 260 miles. So I'm thinking I got to do this 500 mile round trip, not knowing how much gas I have, my luck there's some other problem maybe i don't even have a full tank right now i'm panicking basically so i get up to about 150 miles <clears throat> into the trip my gas gauge has started to move my evic is showing i'm getting like 22 miles per gallon something is clearly wrong so i pull over at a rest stop i'm thinking maybe if i turn the jeep off and then let it sit for a minute when i turn it back on everything will just magically fix i mean why not try the, the good old router trick of unplug and replug you know try the simplest thing first so I turn it off i go inside myself an iced tea, I come back out, I turn it on, no luck. It's still showing barely under a full tank and my EVIC is still showing 20 miles per gallon, I'm 150 miles in. So I keep going, what can I do at this point, you know, but, but keep on going. I figure even if I'm getting terrible 15 miles per gallon or something, I, I've got enough gas to get to where I'm going. Uh, so I'm driving and it, my gas gauge does start going down some more. Here's another little anomaly I found with I guess most cars, but definitely these WJs, the first half of the tank and the second half of the tank do not get equal numbers of miles out of them. Uh, that first half will hang on for a long time and the second half is just gone immediately, right? So maybe that's part of what I was experiencing. Long story short, too late, uh, by the time I get to where I'm going, 225 miles from where I work, I'm at exactly half a tank. I'm at a little bit above a half a tank. My EVIC is showing 22, showing 21.6 miles per gallon. I've gone 225 miles and I'm right at a half a tank. I'm, I go to sleep Friday night thinking something is wrong. Uh, you know, the EVIC, whatever it's getting information on is the same thing that's screwing up the gas gauge. So the next morning I wake up, 
first thing I do, go fill up gas. I wanna find out exactly how much I actually used and maybe cycling another tank of gas through will fix it, I don't freaking know. <clears throat> go to the pump, Jeep takes exactly 10 gallons, 10 point whatever. Which means, my EVIC was not wrong, somehow this dirty old 4.7 got almost 22 miles per gallon on the highway going up to upstate, which was confusing to me because these things are rated for like 19 out the box, I think 19, right? Um, maybe 20 with the 5.45, but this thing's 20 years old, it's tired, you know? Um, when I went up to the family, uh, when I first got the Jeep, when it was much colder out, uh, I think I pulled 19, if I'm not mistaken, which I was happy with. So all weekend, I'm thinking about this, like, you know, all the numbers line up. I went 225 miles, I used a half a tank of gas, my EVIC said almost 22 miles per gallon. All those things line up. It should be correct, but it didn't make any sense to me. Why would this Jeep be getting 22 on the highway? So I decided to try it on the way home. <clears throat> On the way home, before we get on the throughway, I zero everything out, and <clears throat> I uh, go about my way, and I try to recreate kind of the way I was driving on the way up that night. Um, lo and behold, exact same mileage coming home. I took this picture right at uh, 200 and uh, whatever uh, miles, half a tank of gas, the miles are right there. Now my question was why? Because I've been driving this Jeep, that's not really normal mileage. It's way above what this thing was suggested to get. Um, and it's 20 years old. There's no reason it should be getting that kind of mileage. So I've been thinking on it and I've come up with some theories. I think I stumbled onto the perfect storm to get that mileage. And I'm not saying it's incredible mileage, but for a dirty old V8, that's pretty good. <laughs> you know, I was blown away, I was floored. Eric is a miles per gallon aficionado and he was floored by the numbers. Um, Again, this thing's bone stock, so let's, let's dig into it. Why do I think uh, this thing pulled that kind of mileage without even trying? First of all, um, I was keeping it right at 71 miles per gallon. Uh, I wasn't trying to get pulled over for anything. There was light traffic, I was a little tired. I just kept it right at 71, and I wasn't using cruise control. Uh, if you know anything about the throughway, uh, especially down where it starts in Jersey, and then again, uh, if you've ever taken 90, through New York, when you get out towards like exit 30, crazy hills, man, crazy big hills. And the, the cruise control just surges trying to get up these hills. You're better off just doing it by hand. So I kept it right at 71, which is right around where I've always found the sweet spot to be uh, for miles per gallon. Um, also for not getting pulled over. <laughs> I figure if you're going about 72, 71, 72, no cop's gonna pull you over on the highway. I mean, shoot, now that I said that, knock on wood, now that I said that, you know, someone's gonna test that theory. I know you could get pulled over there, but uh, anyway, I digress. <clears throat> um, uh, on top of that, I had just done an oil change. Just did an oil change before we went up, uh, and I know for a fact that affects miles per gallon. Um, if you have your dirty old oil, your engine's not gonna be running as efficiently as if you just put brand new clean oil in. Um, so that we know for a fact. Uh, on top of that, I think the ambient air temperature was just perfect for this trip. It was right in between 40 and 50 both days when I was driving, which is the exact perfect temperature for an engine's operation. I got a buddy who drag races, and this is the time of year he wants to be at the track. He is so bummed when those hot 75, 85 degree days show up, humidity, because his numbers go way down. So he pulls his best numbers of the year this time of year, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, maybe up even to 60. Um, the air is not so hot that the engine is uh, running too hot, but it's not so cold as struggling. It's just perfect. So I think that combination is has to be what led to this number because I can't think of any logical reason why this engine should have gotten such good miles on this trip. Uh, additionally, I don't think that would have been possible without the 545 RFE transmission. If I had the 45, the one without the second um, overdrive, no chance that I'm pulling those numbers. Uh, what I've found about this thing is that it just settles in on the highway, man. It settles in at 71, 72 miles per hour. <clears throat> um, right there at about 22 grand on the uh, RPMs, 
and it just sort of cruises and unless the hill is really big you do not have to downshift man the big v8 is enough power it's not a big v8 it's a small v8 but the v8 has enough power to just keep you on churning that second overdrive gear the four liters not like that man my four liters used to drive me nuts on the highway there's no comfortable place to be all right they don't want to be going over 75 but if you're under 75 you're downshifting all the dang time uh, it's kind of a pain to drive a 4 liter on the highway. I love my 4 liter and I actually miss it a bit driving this 4.7 um, just because the 4 liter and I go way back but <clears throat> it does not like the highway as much as this V8 um, and crazily enough the 6 cylinder gets worse miles per gallon than this thing in my experience and I think it's got to be because that extra power keeps you from having to downshift all the time it keeps you in the sweet spot whereas the 4 liter with the 4.2 RE y'all know how I feel about that um, so I'd like to know what you guys think what kind of mileage you're pulling I, I know a lot of you are probably not running bone stock 4.7 so it's hard to compare um, Eric and I have been tossing around some ideas of doing on this uh, we may want to do a cold air intake but Believe me, we're gonna do it right. <laughs> I know, y'all know, we got that video about terrible cold air intakes. Uh, no, never gonna do a hack job like that on here. Maybe some light exhaust. I don't want this thing to be loud. So if y'all got a 4.7 and uh, you found a nice quiet, I know Walker makes decent um, mufflers that are a little bit more open than stock, but not much louder. I just don't want to drive around in a growling uh, vehicle anymore. Those days are past. I'm too old for that now. Um, so uh, there might be some other little things we might do. I mean, I don't know. I have a super chip at home uh, that I was using for my 4.7. I might dump the tune on, excuse me, for my 4 liter. I might dump the tune on that, put it on this thing, just to see what kind of numbers we could pull. Like I said, miles per gallon is not really my game, but it's interesting to know. It's certainly a good indicator of the health of your engine. If this thing can pull 22 miles per gallon on the highway, even if it was perfect once-in-a-lifetime conditions, um, and it's got to be pretty healthy. I feel real good about this 4.7 after that trip. Uh, I can't wait to tow with this thing. That was one of the reasons I got the V8 because I like to uh, I like to be able to tow and the you know the four liter tops out kind of quick. Though I've I've pushed the boundaries of the four liters tow cap on several occasions. So anyway, let me know what y'all think about my trip. Let me know if you have any other uh, ideas on why this crazy miles per gallon came out of this uh, dirty old power wagon here. Um, battle wagon uh, and let me know what kind of mileage you might be pulling in your 4.7 uh, I don't think a lot of people are pulling 22 on the highway maybe that's normal and I don't know I just missed the bus so anyway as always thanks for watching see you next time